you've done it. You've succeeded. You've achieved your goal, your mission, your quest. How, how did you know? Are you, are, you, are you calling from inside the house? You know how much I have separation anxiety. Oh. And so, I, I, yeah, I am. I'm in your closet. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm glad you've noticed that uh, I've done so well. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to miss. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right back at you. So, yeah, so, so what is that? What is that? Uh, where did you find this epiphany for me? <laughs> <laughs> we are on the next step of the hero's journey, my friend, oh. called the ultimate boon, which is an old fashioned word uh, for like prize. But so last time we talked about being at your highest state, yes. right? Having command of all your capacities. And so obviously, once you're in command of all your capacities, you're able to achieve your goal. Huh. And we are coming toward the end of our hero's journey. And we have a few more steps to go. Uh, we won't hit every single one of them. We'll simplify it a little bit, like we've been doing along the way. Right. But so this is the point in the story where whoever has been rescued or the evil oppressor has been overthrown. And some people might think, well, so what else is there to say? What else there is to say is... What do you do with that? How, how does that apply to your life, to your world, to the reality you live in? And what are the ripple effects of having achieved that? So um, some people might describe this as sort of the beginning or mid part of, of Act 3, if you want to think about it in that three-act structure sort of way. And it is a necessary denouement <laughs> in order for the story to feel complete. Ooh. So... Uh, it would be if you were if that old old film called Star Wars. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, right. So like the Death Star blows up, but we kind of need the ceremony at the end to see that everybody's okay, right? Yeah. To to give the idea that the galaxy has been restored. Yes. So yeah. So it, and that they polished oh, C three PO. That they polished C three PO and that R two got fixed because you know yeah, they got blown yeah. up pretty. Well, bad that was that trend, actually so. I was very concerned at that point uh, when I was. I mean, had, so was the audience because yeah. they left it a little uncertain, right? And of course they dissed Chewbacca by not giving him a medal, but that's oh, that's you know story. that's true. That is true. <laughs> that, that's why we have the rise of Skywalker. I don't think anyone was anyway. tall enough to reach over his head. <laughs> that's a good justification. <laughs> I was so impressed. I saw a little sidetrack, a clip of Carl Sagan. Lots of people won't know who that is, but some of you will. On an interview with Johnny Carson, again, some people, <laughs> only, only some people in our audience will know that Billions reference. and billions of stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, right, that's the Carl Sagan part. Right. <laughs> you do a good Carson, don't you? Yeah, but we're not getting into that. You know, we, okay, we, okay, we, fine, don't, fine. we don't want a but, lawsuit. But way back then, <laughs> way back then, Carl Sagan noted that... Uh, as Star Wars represented the universe, he was being humorous, of course. Yes. He was like, oh, it appears to be fulfilled with people who look like us, which is <laughs> very unlikely. And, and there, apparently there, there's some bigotry against Wookiees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now that, that's funny. That's very funny. He's, he was a funny guy. Yeah. Um, and um, great writer, uh, uh, Pale Blue Dot. I recommend that book to anybody. But that's another story. What we're talking about is how we can look at the idea of achieving the ultimate boon in the lens of our own lives. Oh, I love it. Great. Good, good concept for today's podcast. Let's get to it. <laughs> Welcome to the Heart of the Cards, a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what we're dealt. Hey, this is Dan Green. And Eric Stewart. And this is episode 14 of the Heart of the Cards, the ultimate boon. We are focusing again on the hero's journey, bringing it to a close pretty soon. And I love this idea because it requires you to focus on the purpose of the whole journey. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about what inspires you to go on it, the obstacles and the, and the advances, the help, the mentor, the, the meeting with the goddess, these things that aid you along your way. And we haven't talked a lot about what's the actual point of it. Right. So, you know, this is kind of like, all right, so uh, the dust has settled. I've, uh, you know, but <laughs> but in in addition to that, it's also so what motivated you in the first place? Um, wouldn't we also have known that or do we discover that? Well, it it could be. You're right. It, there's a sense of what that's going to be at the beginning. Right. But what are the, what are the actual ramifications? What actually happens once you achieve 
that goal that you have set. Now, in some stories, because these myths are not all goody two shoe stories, everyone lives happily ever after, mm-hmm. which is important to understand. Because sometimes the story structure goes, you attain what you thought was important, but it ends up being meaningless. Right. Or there's other stories where it's just a tragedy. You know, you you try for it and you fail. Mm-hmm. Or you know, or somewhere, or you you fail to achieve what you thought was important, but you gain something else in return, right? So, uh, it, it, but it's it's that point of the story, that point of the journey, makes that sense. Point of yeah, the, makes of sense. The quest. So while they're related, they're not exactly equivalent. Hmm. All right. Well, so since you have a, a better handle on that, <laughs> you probably should go first. Oh, all right. Very well. I'll I'll step in. So. I'm going to share a couple of things today, and initially I'll talk about how this applies to some of my work that people are familiar with as an actor, or as, as a creative person otherwise, and, and then I'll, I'll share a, a different angle um, as we all have different kinds of heroes' journeys in our, in our lives. We've been talking about the things that people know us for um, the most, but you know anything that you set out as a, as a goal for yourself in a way is its own journey, is its own quest, and, and very often there are different kinds of challenges that present. But I'll start off with talking about how pursuing a creative course in my life has benefited me and and hopefully benefited some others. So I've said a few times, I think, on a few different episodes that creativity is its own reward. And sometimes I liken that to eating something that's nutritious, right? It satisfies your hunger, but it's also good for you or getting some exercise, right? You expend some whatever extra energy, but it, you know, it also is good for your body, so on and so forth. So I see creativity in some ways being similar to that in that the first person this creative exercise benefits is the creator itself, the artist themselves. And by artist, I think we need to demystify that term just a little bit. I I think if you are pursuing something creative, if you are using your imagination to bring something into being that wouldn't have been there otherwise... I think that's a basic form of creativity. Is it artistry, you know, in terms of our cultural standards? Well, you know, that's up to debate, you know, in certain ways. Mm -hmm. But but it benefits you first. I think you would agree that when you have a creative drive, it's like something that nags at you almost. It's something that's restless inside of you. Mm -hmm. And if you try to ignore it, you're you're going to feel worse, <laughs> yeah. And right, you're, you'll feel unfulfilled. You'll feel disconnected. You'll feel frustrated, irritable, and that's uh, a consequence of something that's relevant inside of you not getting the attention or the expression that it needs. Yes, I think that's why often we associate the term like neurotic with creative people, and. That makes sense. I definitely fall into that category. And, but that is a, when in, in, when in good balance to having that stirring inside of you and an ability to release it in a productive and creative way, that's, that's necessary. Uh, not only for that person's well being, mental and emotional well being, but also it's necessary for the culture itself. We, always will have creative people, however that creativity is expressed. I mean, we have this whole new form of creative expression called movies. That's a relatively new form of creative expression. It's only been around for about 100 years. And one of the things that's wonderful about it is that it incorporates so many other classical, traditional forms of creative expression, music and acting and writing and so forth. So so the benefit for the individual Let's, I'll start there first, just for myself. I didn't want to be an actor. I mentioned before I wanted to be a stuntman yeah. <laughs> when I was a kid. Like the fall but, but guy. The, <laughs> yes! <laughs> Lee Majors! That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, that was a fun show. Um, so my creative goal was to be a comic book artist. And I really thought for it's like several years that was going to be what I did or what would become, you know, my path most important to me. And that starts, though, with having this desire to create an image that tells a story. And what is consistent about what happened later in my creative development was the storytelling part, which is what acting is from one character's perspective. And then that 
blossomed in actually the 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 other uh, greater part of like imagining the story and imagining the world and imagining the characters that was happening with the drawing stuff too so i started with drawing what i was seeing i think one of the first things i drew was um a, a little star trek cartoon but i tried to make it in I, I tried to make it look as realistic as possible now we're talking about the efforts of somebody under 10 years mm-hmm. old so I, I i wouldn't say that i was really successful at that but but that was intriguing to me and um i would also love to draw images of spider-man and batman and i think i think batman i was in love with first and then spider-man i'm not sure it was it's still pretty neck and neck right <laughs> so all of the traditional things that you would expect and once i started getting into D, you know i like drawing some fantasy stuff as well but i wasn't fully satisfied with just playing with the characters that were already established from very early on i always was thinking about the world that I wanted to create, or rather the world that I wanted to visit and to express myself in. Now, I wouldn't have put it in those terms at that age. I don't think I would have, you know, understood it in that way. But that's where my imagination was going. Hmm. And one of my favorite, this was after I started getting drawing lessons from that comic book artist uh, I mentioned early on when we were talking about, I think it was in our mentors uh, episode, um, I'm not sure, but I know that I brought him up before. So, and he would give me assignments and, and, um, uh, and then eventually I, and it, those assignments, you know, it starts with, you know, see if you can replicate this illustration and understand these principles of structure and, and how these things work together. And, but soon after that, he would give me a script, one that he had received and said, okay, now you come up with the layout, you come up with the character design mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. And so that was giving me a, a starting point upon which I could elaborate and do my own thing and add a spin. But then eventually um, I was creating my own characters. I remember there was this one I came up with, which I'm, I'm glad I didn't further <laughs> develop. But <laughs> the idea was, and I'm, I really haven't thought about it since then, I, I don't think. But it was something about like there's people living inside of Jupiter and they're like, there's a whole society. And of course, there's like the, the haves and the have nots and some form of, you know, injustice and imbalance. And then there's this one character who's, I don't know, who, who flips sides and then decides that they're going to take out all of the oppressors. Yes. Um, but, he, but he's brutal, you know, kind of like the Punisher. And, and so in a rather unextraordinary leap of imagination, I called him Assassino. <laughs> <laughs> was it a hyphenated O? Was it assassin? No, I think it was all just one word. It wasn't like Lion O from <laughs> you know, Thundercats. But, <laughs> I like but what it. I was in, yeah, I was into the idea of, you know, the dangerous guy, uh, which, you know, let's face it, I still am. But because obviously I am such a dangerous guy. But yeah, I wanted, you know, the, the character design to look cool and mysterious. Yeah. And that sort of a thing. So. I think part of his design, I don't have this illustration anymore, but I think part of his design was like that um, sighting scope. You know, like when you're playing a video game and you have a reticle that tells you where your target's going to hit. Yes, the, yes. Yeah, yeah. So I think that was somewhere, maybe it was like on his face, which wouldn't have, again, that, that's very similar to Deadshot and some other characters that uh, people might know from DC Comics. And I think there's other examples. But anyway, so, but for me, that was something that kept me awake at night. That was something that felt like it was so necessary to get out of my system and to express. And so in a very simplistic story of, let's just keep this as an example, uh, I, I, you know, I put my efforts into that. I'm enjoying all of this time going into my, my inner world and my imagination, but, but, but then creating it in the outer world, right? Giving it some representation there. And so, and then I come up with an image that at the time I thought was one of my best pieces of visual art. So, so that's where it, you know, creativity is, is its own reward, right? I'm getting something out of the participation with it, and I'm also refining my drawing skills. I'm getting better at something that I can apply more generally, right? Just like, you know, if you eat healthy, uh, your body's going to be in better shape or, you know, exercise or so on and so forth. So, so there's that. But then one of my sisters said, oh, hey, because they had seen me, you know, working on this. And uh, she had some friends over. This is my oldest sister, who's uh, quite a bit older than I am, uh, 13 years older than I am because she's from a previous marriage. And so uh, she had her older friends gathering. So, like, I I mean, they they must have been, 
late teens, early 20s. So, you know, I think they're totally cool, right? They're like, they're like almost adults, um, but more fun. And <laughs> so I brought down the illustration and <laughs> they were like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Now, of course, they're probably just being nice, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> to <laughs> their friend's little brother. Um, but it was great to see other people respond in in a positive way sure and they wanted to, they wanted to hear the whole story which was fun now I'll finish uh, I'll finish this up a little bit uh, by broadening it out to all these other things that I've been fortunate enough to do in in a creative pursuit where when you make something whatever the medium you can see if it actually affects other people it doesn't always you get disappointing reactions, <laughs> right? Reactions, you're like, oh, I thought that was going to go over better or so forth. Um, but sometimes you make something and it really sparks something in someone else. This is not me aggrandizing myself. I think anybody anybody who's done something like that can identify with what I'm talking about. I know you can. Mm-hmm. So um, when I got into doing the acting stuff, I saw that happening on a grander scale. And I realized that I was probably better at acting than I was at, at doing illustration. And also acting, you get involved in so many other ways with meanings within yourself and, and participating. And yeah, it's more structured in other ways, not as freeform as illustration necessarily. But um, having that relationship with the live audience when you're on stage is, as I said before, it's, it's, you know, it's infectious. And you have this, this shared moment with such a bigger community, even though it's ephemeral, which is part of what makes it more special, right? That'll never exactly be recaptured the same way again. And um, yeah, but, but ha- we understand as audience members what it's like to be swept up in the telling of a story, mm-hmm. right? That cathartic experience of being taken away, transported, even to a place that could never exist, but it feels true because there are truths within the story, things that we can identify with, recognize as having an actual resonance to the way we experience our lives, ourselves, and the reality we live in. So that is perhaps an obvious thing to say about the value of creativity, but I think it's worth saying. And the hero's journey is the phrase that Joseph Campbell used to talk about the, this monomyth idea. He's not the only person to have this monomyth idea. Uh, he's perhaps the one who's best recognized. And another thing that Joseph Campbell says about following what it is that's true to you, or, is, or the phrase that he used, following your bliss, is that it not only saves you, meaning brings you to your best self is kind of this modern phrase that we've come up with, but it's, it's applicable. But you also save the world around you because people benefit from seeing someone who is alive in that way, activated in that way, present in the moment. It's so easy to get lost in the things that we're worried about happening, the things that we regret that we didn't do. Mm-hmm. It's very hard to just be present and although if you listen to Tips and Tricks uh, last entry, you'd have more tips on how to do that. But <laughs> yes, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, but it, it's it's difficult to do, and I think that's something that a, a really well crafted piece of creative expression does reliably. Whether it's dance or sculpture or writing or music or acting or a, or a combination of all of those things, it brings you to that moment. And when it's something that you can share with a greater audience, you're all unified in a certain way that is perhaps unique to to the human experience. Yeah. And so that sense of, of being connected, that sense of being present, that sense of being not just connected with the moment that you're in, but a moment that you're sharing with a community of others, uh, I think is a tremendous boon. And... To a certain extent, we get to see echoes of what we created in a sound booth 20 or more years right. ago, still connecting people <laughs> to this day. Yeah. Wow. So that, you know, it's interesting. You 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 started off as uh, as an artist drawing. Um, I did the same thing. Like that was that was my thing. You did. Yeah, I know you did. Yeah. I want to see some of your stuff. Yeah, it, it, it was it all started off very comedic. But now I have to break into your mom's house. 
and oh, hide in her closet yeah. to find all of your illustrations. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Unless she threw that out with all my GI Joes. Um, but the, <laughs> but the, yeah, it's just, it's, it's interesting because it, it started off comedic stuff and then it became like all the fantasy art. Like uh, if people are yeah. familiar with the the comic books, uh, heavy metal and uh, epic. Oh, love, and, love. That yeah, stuff. that was more my my thing. But um, no, that's that's interesting. You know, so much of what we have uh, experienced on our journeys are both um, opposite and similar. <laughs> um, <laughs> and sometimes they flip in terms of the, uh, the dynamic and, and the, maybe the motivation mm-hmm. of why we make these choices. Yeah. But for me, someone who has become very comfortable with being, you know, out in front of the audiences and, and sure. the interaction and on the outside, I'm, uh, a very sort of social person. Uh, but those mm-hmm. who truly know me also know that I like to be alone. I like to, uh, you know, uh, go into my sort of my, my bat cave and, and, uh, and yeah, spend yeah. a lot of time just thinking and, 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 and just tuning out the rest of the world. Um, I think if I were to look at sort of, um, the meaning behind my journey, uh, it didn't start off with me wanting to be a professional or following a path in any of the categories that I had either, you know, dabbled in or had become now become a professional. And um, I think my, uh, my first with my art, with my drawing, it was a way for me to be by myself and create my own little fantasy world. Um, even though I had a lot of friends and I was definitely, uh, popular and, and, and a social kid. Um, Mm -hmm. I also never even just wanted to be part of the pack. Um, I think in an earlier, uh, podcast, we, uh, you know, when my, when my mother came to visit, um, um, preschool or kindergarten and she looks through the window the class the the classroom window and sees all the kids gathered around the teacher during story time and i'm in the back playing with blocks or lego by myself afterwards she's after uh after class she asked the teacher um why isn't eric participating with the rest of the kids and she said we both feel it's better this way and Hmm. that really was you know i always wanted to do my own thing, not for rebellious reasons, but I never felt like um, maybe there was, you know, you had to do what everyone else was doing. I wanted to do what I wanted to do. Now, yes, I got in trouble a little bit in school over, you know, joking around Mm -hmm. and and being a class clown and and just because I was bored um, or wanted to entertain my friends. But mostly um, I just... I felt like I, I wanted to, do, you know, do my own thing, follow my own path. So the art mm-hmm. stuff was my world. And then mm-hmm. it also was part of the entertainment factor. Which was important to you on many levels. Yes. And that started before I even thought I want to be in the arts. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously being exposed to that with my mother being a dancer, I knew about performance and and the energy of that. And I saw how audiences reacted to that. And that was fun. And um but it wasn't like this was a, a drive of mine. It was more mm-hmm. of, okay, I'm in French class and this is incredibly boring. I'm going to draw a really <laughs> cool picture and my friends yeah. are probably going to see it while I'm drawing and they'll be entertained and they'll laugh and they'll, and, and you know, they'll, they'll find, they'll find an escape from this very boring class. But it wasn't like I needed to do that because I wanted them to say, "Hey, that's really cool," and I'm thinking, "Yeah, this is this is something I want to do for for." Well, a- and if some of those illustrations were modeled after what you were seeing in heavy metal, those could be fairly provocative. Yeah, well, those were a little <laughs> later. The, the the comedic stuff started first. I probably didn't uh, start drawing the the more uh, fantasy art stuff until probably ninth or tenth grade. But like from fifth to ninth grade, it was all comedic, funny little. Uh, maybe even a little uh-huh. earlier than that. Um, but, mm-hmm. um, and I had my own comic strip thing that I would design. And I remember I used to go to uh, a sleepaway camp during the early years of my life when my mom was um, single and, you know, after recently being divorced and, and starting to date. Mm-hmm. So it was a little easier to have <laughs> some free time without me being around all the time. Not that I took that personally. Um, but I remember they had a yearbook 
um, or not a yearbook, but a end of summer sort of compilation book of at the camp. And I remember that there was like a contest. And I say that with quotes because it wasn't really a, you know, everyone got a chance to do something for the book. But to get the cover was a big deal. And I remember a buddy of mine and I were competing for this. We had both been like finalists and they picked my my drawing as the cover. And that was like, oh, Mm. okay, that's kind of cool. I guess people like what I'm doing. And, you know, friends would always say, hey, you you know, that's really cool. Can you draw something on my notebook or, you know, you know, inside my French book? Um, (laughs) Things like that. Um, But the the reason I think that I was even uh, going down those paths was for my my sanity, like you were talking about that, um, mm. you, that need to express yourself, um, sure. being sort of a, and, a troubled, angry young man, uh, you know, yeah. this was my escape. And it's, a, it, it's an escape. Exactly. Yeah. I was just gonna say and that. so that's, yeah. that's where it, it started with art. And when I went to, when I went to, for one year, I went to music and art, which if anybody's familiar with the movie from the eighties fame, uh, that's where that, <laughs> that, that took place. Um, and, it became structured for for one year I, in ninth grade. I went there and it became very structured, like what we had to draw, what we had to paint. And that turned me off to art completely. <laughs> I, I was so I, I was so. Right. Yeah. It's a, it, now it's a must. I was like, no, that's not like I can I can yeah. easily paint that still life of fruit. That's not right. satisfying to me now, of course, as an older person, I can look back and say, well, yeah, you need to understand the the rules of this stuff so that you can, you know, move on to your own thing. But honestly, it really just rubbed me the wrong way. And I stopped drawing for a while. Like when I left that mm. school and I went back to the school that I had originally gone to, because I, I went there from fifth grade to, to eighth grade, left for one year and then came back and finished high school there. Um, it became the shift to music and once again, this was not, I had sort of dabbled in a little guitar playing here and there. And I, am, I, I loved music, but it wasn't like I ever took a music course or was, mm-hmm. was mm-hmm. really singing or doing anything like that. And then getting exposed to that from, from my, my, the music class that I started taking in high school, um, or actually maybe even it was a little earlier than that, but, uh, just the idea of, okay, so maybe this is something that could be an outlet for me or creativity. And once I started writing songs, I realized that was mm-hmm. another place where I could get things out, my emotions, um, without the even the, the plan of, will people like this? Are they going to get what I'm saying? That was mm-hmm. really... I was only doing that to get stuff out of my own head and also mm-hmm. and also just that that you know not being able to deal with maybe the the things the emotional things that I was going through um this was a great outlet for that and only after I started to really perform as a musician did I understand the connection and the um especially with people who would say you know, you're writing the songs that, that, you, that I can really relate to. And I've been through things like that. And that really helped me through the tough time that I've been through because I realize I'm not the only one that's done that or been through that. It right, That right. really started to make sense as, OK, so what started as a sort of a, a, a personal journey of expression for myself and for um, my own therapy uh, right. became a way to really connect with people. And that's my epiphany of, oh, yes, this is why I do this, because I do benefit from it. And hopefully other people benefit from it as well. And then it becomes why art is part of our lives. I believe that without all of this stuff, life would be so boring. I mean, not that everything out there is so amazing, but my goodness, like, I can't imagine if we didn't have writers and dancers and 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 and, and painters and 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 musicians and 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 poets if we didn't have that my goodness like how would we even it's unimaginable how would we even speak of love of anger of like we we'd only be like 
fighting and hugging you know like 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 i get it like the, the you know you could the physical side can support a lot of that too but my goodness to use to use art to get expression out and for someone to to stand in a in a museum and look at a painting and and have their own connection to it and their own story relate to it that's that's magic that's human magic to me yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I think. I think that for me, the the where the journey uh, started, what was the inspiration behind that, and then of course, understanding maybe why I I I'm on this journey and still on this journey, um, is that is is that is that that goal to not be so isolated as the only one that's been through this stuff. And also the joy and the shared sorrow of being mm-hmm. a, being a human. Yeah, one of my favorite storytellers is John Williams. Yes, yes. And there was an article recently. Um, he said that he was going to retire, and then Steven Spielberg pulled him out of retirement. <laughs> and <laughs> and Spielberg said, "I tell the story once, and then Johnny." which is what he calls John Williams, uh, tells it again. (laughs) And Williams said in that same article, I believe, that he he thinks maybe there was music before there was ever any language, which I wouldn't have a hard time buying into that. That makes sense. Nor would I have a hard time believing that there was creative expression before there was the language as, you know, language as we think of it today. Um, And so, yeah, it's a necessity of course, there's art in nature. I mean, and birds sing and animals, you know, make well, milk. and that's and I'm sure that right. songs, you know, you hear a bird sing. It's not like we taught them. You know, you're, there's it's there's true, music but around us. You're, you're absolutely right. There's sound around us. Yes. But what but what a person might um, uh, reflect back to you is to say there's the sound that the birds make. But it's you who interpret it as beauty and art. Yes. So in many ways, what the creative person can see and can hear and can imagine and resonate with Mm -hmm. is the starting point of being able to to express with it and say something about it, with it, you know. uh, And um, yeah, but it's, it's, uh, I agree with, I can't imagine a, a world where there isn't creative expression uh, I can't imagine the human race without it. And I think it's all part of trying to make some sort of sense of what we're experiencing. Yes. And, you know, without getting into the the other discussion that can come from this is that there really isn't as much of a focus on art and teaching this stuff as, mu- as much as I think it yeah. should be, or at least exposure yeah. to that um, as if it's yeah. not as important as the other things that we learn in school and well, today they call it content, right? On YouTube, yes. I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, but it's just, it's just, it's a little disappointing because, you know, for those yeah. that are like, no, 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 we don't need to focus on this part of 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 our curriculum. It's like, okay, so let's for you know an experiment, just remove everything that has to do with art in your life, and then get back to right. it. <laughs> you know, right? Tell me if right. if just making money without enjoying the rest of that stuff, is, <laughs> right. you know, or understanding, you know, how to do, you know, do math and how to uh, and and English, which are like the two <laughs> two things we only focus on in many schools. Uh, how right. that's going right. to give you uh, full fulfillment in your life? Right. It's so true. It's so true. Um, well. I think we should give a moment or two for our friend Tip Centrix mm. to tell us a little bit about nurturing your imagination. Ooh, yeah, let's check it out. Welcome to Wizardly Words of Wisdom. I am your host, Tips Entrix. Over the weekend, I joined one of my children at a popular culture convention expo something. I thought it was delightful how wonderfully people were dressed in such extravagant and imaginative manner. (laughs) And then people came up to me, remarking how my cosplay was dope, sick, and uh, extra. I presumed it was a compliment. I don't know about that. But I do know a thing or two about nurturing your imagination. First, pursue what interests you. 
You know whether or not you like something, so listen to that part of yourself. Whether it's fashionable or not, it matters to you, and that's what matters. Second, take time to reflect. There are so many things which demand our attention, but if we allow our mind time and space to be open, it creates a void for other things to fill it. And thirdly and finally, take up a hobby for fun. Not everything has to be some great achievement of a grand master plan. Having fun is essential to be creative. And finally and thirdly, oh, oh, well, I am consistent. I'll give you one more, just because I like you. Consume art. Whether it's reading a book or looking at paintings or watching a fine movie, engaging in others' imaginations can't help but ignite your own. Well, that's all I have for you for now. I hope you thought it was... Uh, fire. And I look forward to the next time I can share with you some wizardly words of wisdom. Well, I gotta say, um, I think that uh, he's onto something there. I mean, he's on something, but he's also on to something. <laughs> <laughs> he took a little bit too much of that LDS. Yes. yes. The elixir. <laughs> <laughs> what but is... He comes, he comes back like a shaman. <laughs> yes, we want to know exactly that... what is he cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was the one who cooked. Uh, oh, yeah. Anyway, true. always good to hear from tips, and I'm almost certain we're going to have a friend of his visit soon. And uh, and I'm eager to have uh, the next part of this conversation, but I think we'll save that for part two yeah. of The Ultimate Boon. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, Eric, yeah. for your time. You too, and your Dan. Attention and, yeah, and, great and story. Great story. I appreciate that. Right back at you. And, and thanks to everyone who's listening to The Heart of the Cards. And if you could please like every episode you listen to. I know you hear this all the time on YouTube, but the reason why is that it helps us expand our reach. It really does. We know we get several hundred listeners every week, which we are so grateful for. Yes, thank you. Uh, but that's not reflected in the amount of likes that we get. And if you could just help us out in that way, we could share the love, spread the joy. Yeah. It'd be awesome. Like Dan said, except, <laughs> you know, I'll sum it up for you. Just hit the like button. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. What he said. So, um... So again, thank, thanks to everyone, and we look forward to the next time where we can share a conversation about creativity, inspiration, and dealing with what you dealt. Thanks for listening to The Heart of the Cards with Dan Green and Eric Stewart. We hope this conversation in some way spoke to you. Whatever your journey, we look forward to crossing paths again in the next episode. This is Veronica Taylor. And on behalf of Andromeda Productions, we wish you well. Andromeda, always a sound choice. <laughs>